act by then. But right now, many conservatives remain opposed to the legislation. Joining us now for some thoughts on all this, Congressman Pete Sessions, a Republican from Texas. Welcome, sir. Good to have you on the program. Thank you very much. Well, let's talk for a moment about the fact that there is still division uh, within the GOP ranks about uh, the best package to put together for the American people on health care. I know that you have been intimately involved with this issue for some time, and you have said, although this is not a perfect package, this is still something that you can live with. Talk to me for a moment about that. Why do you feel like this is a package that will benefit the American people? The American people right off the bat will find that they will have finally a health care plan that does not diminish our, our economic prowess of this country. As you know, the mandates that were placed on business and on individuals turned out to be a miserable failure. But the most important thing this does is to bring people into the general marketplace of insurance as opposed to Obamacare, where only about 24 out of 100 doctors were available to them. We're going to up that level to where they will be in the general, what I would call the general insurance marketplace. And that marketplace has, is more robust and has the kind of coverage that you want, and it will be at the price that you can pay. So it's a huge advantage right off the bat, not only to have uh, the advantage of not harming our economy, but helping consumers with what they need. Members of Congress are on Obamacare and we understand its destructive nature. But there are concerns about the numbers because we are hearing that the premiums and deductibles are still high. And that is a major component of what made voters feel that they wanted something different, that they were not satisfied with the Obamacare the way it was, and that it was not affordable, really, for people who needed the uh, emergency care and some, you know, surgeries, et cetera. Sure. Uh, what are you doing right now to get those costs down? Because if that's still there, if those premiums and deductibles are still high, that's a promise that you're not delivering to voters. Well, in fact, that's a good question. We're going to allow those on Obamacare to remain for two years. And by them remaining on Obamacare, it means that the huge cost that was associated with that and small numbers, only 12.2 million people are on Obamacare, uh, at this present time and because it's a very expensive system it transfers cost to other insurance areas as you know many prices increase by as much as sixty percent the second part is very simple and that is we've got to move quickly to group plans individual plans and marketplace for individual plans is a diminishing breed in other words it cannot pay for itself when the prices rise so as quickly as we get to associated health care plans or the ability to be able to have employees to take this tax credit directly to work, we will consolidate that into larger teams, prices go down. Let me ask you about the fact in terms of communicating this message to the public. I know that there's a lot of information out there and some folks may not be getting the, the information that you guys want to have out there in terms of the accurate information about this plan. I know you had a town hall uh, just yesterday with over 2,000 people and some of it got a bit loud and, and uh, raucous as I understand it. Um, and you were a bit frustrated saying, as I understand, uh, that people weren't listening to what you were telling them about the health care plan, that there was misinformation out there. How would you, you know, voters are really frustrated right now, and they're really trying to get, uh, you know, the, the, the information, the, the right information, but they also want to make sure the promises are going to be delivered that uh, sent people back to Washington. W what do you have to say to that? Yeah, well, the listening was because people were so loud, people could not hear each other and were not listening, so they could ask a a follow-up question. The bottom line to it is this is a divided issue and it's a divided issue because we have not essentially sold the advantages of the package. We waited for some period of time to get a score from the Congressional Budget Office and CBO came in with numbers that I think offer a mixed message. The biggest message is here is that every single American family that today is not covered by some sort of an insurance because they don't get the tax benefit, they will tomorrow have the opportunity. The average family in America that does not have coverage today will get about $8,000 
tax credit to help them go purchase a marketplace uh, plan. Those on Obamacare will be held in place as long as two years. So I believe that the compromise package that we have is going to be outstanding. There are still 30 million people who are uninsured. The people who were yelling at me yesterday could have cared less about them, and the Republican Party does care about the middle class of this country, and the Democrats clearly do not. Well, we shall see what lies ahead. I'm, I know that the vote is set for Thursday, and there's, you know, the expectations are running quite high. Congressman, good to see you. Thank you so Thank much you for joining us today much. with your insights. You Appreciate it. Well, there's a